What do they actually do at Davos? And should we be worried, or are they just there to help us? <coughs> Hello there, you 5.7 million Awakening Wonders. Thank you for joining me on this Voyage Towards Truth. If you don't subscribe yet, subscribe now and turn on the notification bell. Have you ever wondered what they do at Davos? I certainly have. And now a new book written by Peter Goodman reveals exactly what goes on in that peculiar conference held at high altitude. And it's not just nefarious stuff. It's not just coming up with ideas that will bleed down from the top of that mountain into the governmental systems of ordinary folk like you and I. There's also weird role plays going on. And also, perhaps more important than anything, virtual signaling on an alpine scale. What is Davos? Uh, is this the realm of conspiracy theory? Or is there something genuinely happening at Davos annually? Uh, well, Davos is, of course, this glittering annual event high up in the Swiss Alps in the otherwise unremarkable village of Davos. Every January, the world's most powerful people show up, uh, heads of state, CEOs of major corporations, lots of billionaires, a few celebrities to keep things interesting, public intellectuals, some very well-intentioned uh, activists, uh, members of NGOs, and, and the place is lousy with journalists. Hmm. Uh, and they all get together and they have actually quite different experiences. The, the forward uh, sort of consumer facing part of Davos that's served up by the World Economic Forum, this think tank that runs it. Uh, it, you know, it's basically just a standard variety, uh, concerned citizen gathering, discussing all the things you'd expect, climate change, racial injustice, gender imbalance, future of work, all that kind of stuff, all under this banner committed to improving the state of the world, which is the part of it that sort of gives up the joke of it. Uh, this is a gathering of the ultimate beneficiaries of the status quo, the people who have, in fact, built the status quo for their own benefit. And the idea that they're all going to go up there uh, in high uh, mountain air and uh, think about how to change it uh, is just nonsensical. And of course, they've been doing this since the 70s, and the world has gotten more the way it was before, not, not the other way around. Now, the, the billionaires show up, um, and they mostly just sit in private suites and do deals, and uh, as Kara Swisher put it to me recently, lick one another um, in private. Uh, they do show up in the Congress Center. That's the place where all these seminars are held uh, strategically. Like, I've seen them show up to engage in, I am not making this up, uh, a simulation of the Syrian refugee experience where they submit to being blindfolded and led around in the dark while someone's hollering at them in Arabic, demanding papers. And then they all <laughs> congratulate one another for their empathy. And then they go off to some banquet, you know, underwritten by a global consulting company and they drink champagne and eat caviar. I see what goes on. I mean, I was pretty surprised by the role play. I'll level with you. I didn't anticipate that. So um, what uh, what is it about the people that have uh, attended these events, um, uh, as you've described them, the ultimate beneficiaries of the status quo? Um, what is it about them and historically who has attended that makes it clear that it's not primarily about addressing climate change or at least radically altering the trajectory of the, fin the financial interest that might benefit from the current, you know, the, the way that energy is managed right now. I mean, who, who, who historically ha have affiliations with um, Davos or, 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 or the WAF, at least? Sure. Uh, so Jeff Bezos used to show up regularly. Uh, that was back in the dot-com era. He hasn't come in the last few years. Uh, Mark Benioff, who's a guy I profile in my book, he's the CEO of this big Silicon Valley uh, tech company called Salesforce. He shows up regularly. Larry Fink, who's the world's largest asset manager. This is someone who, until the recent meltdown, was managing somewhere upwards of 10 trillion US dollars uh, worth of assets now cut down to 8 trillion and change, uh, which is still a lot of money. He shows up regularly. I want to obnoxiously, though, come back to your earlier question, because I think it's really important. I don't traffic in conspiracies about Davos. Uh, I don't think it's uh, the sort of secret place where the rules are made for the rest of us by the forum itself. The people who show up at Davos, heads of state and billionaires, they already have power. They can meet anywhere and they do have the power to shape the world and they have used it 
for their own benefit. But the idea that the forum itself run by this dour German economist who you've had some fun with, Russell, uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, the idea that you know they're the ones who are secretly in charge of the world, I just don't buy it. What's key about the wealthy people who show up in Davos is they're not interested in simply owning everything and writing the rules. They would like us to view them as change agents, revolutionary, people who have our best interests at heart. Uh, so the people I refer to in my book is Davos Man, and I'm, I'm stealing a term coined by Samuel Huntington, the political scientist in 20, 2004. These are the billionaires who would have us believe that if we organize our, our societies around sending more money to the people who already have most of it, somehow all of us win, which has in reality happened zero times. But they use Davos as this place to kind of rally amongst themselves. Hey, we really are the good guys. So the more money we have, the more good we can do. Let's get back to our mission to cut taxes and deregulate. That's what they're really about. Uh, and, and also trying to convince us and insinuating into our political discourse, something they've done very well around the world, that you know they can be trusted. If we just get government out of the way, government slow, bureaucratic, uh, if, if we get do-gooders out of the way, they'll they'll take care of climate change, gender imbalance, all the stuff that we care about. So whilst it may not in itself be a pivotal event, because as you observe, those kind of people could meet anywhere in private and, and presumably do meet in a variety of places in a more clandestine form, it is a demonstration of who those characters are we can see who the most powerful people are or the most powerful interests and institutions and entities and i suppose as what you are saying to us peter is that it demonstrates their appetite to be perceived as benign or, right. or, or even to be seen in a favorable light um so it's the, but that's that's significant i think with the uh, the tombra of the current global discourse that there is this ongoing trend of trying to mask a inverted commas bad intention beneath a good one that you're saying that ultimately the interests of the kind of people that attend or in, in the kind of interests that attend davos want to see deregulation and the ability to pursue their financial objectives free from the impediment of high right. taxation and state intervention and they also want to present that as they are crusading on behalf of uh, minorities and they want gender equality and they are interested in climate change. So ultimately, I suppose what we have is it's a it's a PR exercise. Right. right? Yeah, it, it's I, I call it it's a prophylactic against democracy. Right. If they wow. convince us that, hey, here we are. Look at the agenda of the World Economic Forum. You know, we've got this. Mark Benioff's really worried about automation and job losses and they're having a panel discussion on universal basic income. You're welcome. Uh, we're talking about corporate governance 2.0. We're against uh, corruption and we want more democracy. And by the way, uh, that then has the effect of allowing them to simultaneously argue that we need not pull the levers of our own democracies to have a say about how capitalism actually works. We need not stick them with uh, progressive taxation so we can finance uh, the things that, you know, let's face it, the markets are never going to provide uh, health care, uh, help for people who are in trouble, uh, affordable education. Like, that's just not going to happen if we live in a world that's just dominated by privatization. Capitalism, I I'm a capitalist. Like, it's really effective. It's a great way to build an iPhone. You know, thank thanks for that. Uh, and, and so they're effectively saying to us, you need not worry about antitrust enforcement. You need not worry about labor movements. We'll take care of labor. And the latest thing that, they're, that we can get into, if you want, is stakeholder capitalism, which comes directly out of Klaus Schwab's playbook. He's actually written a book about it. It's this idea that, you know, Milton Friedmanism, uh, corporations should just organize to return profit to shareholders. That era is over. We get it. We hear you. You're mad about inequality. You're upset about uh, climate change not being addressed. You think billionaires ought to pay taxes. Hey, we'll take care of this for you. Stakeholder capitalism is the new mantra. And, and it means, you know, we're we're not just catering to our shareholders, say the CEOs of, of large publicly traded corporations. Now we're dealing with stakeholders and that's labor, never labor unions. They're very careful about that. This is unilateral. It's generosity. Uh Mark Benioff once said, the planet is a stakeholder, which is 
very reassuring to those of us who live on the planet. Uh, but that also gives away the artifice of this. this. This is totally about public relations. It's about preventing change by pretending that you're engaged in change. Preventing change by pretending to be engaged in change. I really like that. Let me know what you thought of that video. Thank you very much for staying to the end. Hit me up in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these and please sign up to my mailing list right now so I can tell you about all the big moves that we're making. We're setting up some interesting stuff. Turn on the notification bell and stay free. Mm -hmm.